off limits. We want to answer your questions about business, life, and everything in between. Send your questions to ask at beckandliz.com. That is ask at beckandliz.com. So I actually have a question. Okay. And this came up in our conversation with uh, Shane Evans, um, the co-founder of Massage Heights. And she said something about uh, stopping and pondering and reflecting on who we are and asking ourselves, what are the two things we love about ourselves? So on the spot, Elizabeth, what are the two things you love about yourself? <laughs> Nothing like being put on the spot with a question like oh, that. Right? That's probably got to be the question most women would hate to be asked the most. So before you put me on the spot, I'm going to put our audience on the spot and say, you guys need to fill it in on the comments and help us out here and, and get on the team so that we're not floundering alone in this. I think you're uh, buying time. I am. You're buying probably. time. I'm <laughs> hoping your brain will kick in something. I think I love this about me. <laughs> <laughs> I love my ability, as my husband would say, to deflect. No. <laughs> deflect. Donald, Donald calls pillar. me the queen deflector. That's called deflector. Pillar, right? Yeah. It's like, you're always the queen of deflecting. I'm like, well, yes. that's hard. <laughs> um, I think if I was forced to answer the question, I would say one thing I am proud of about myself is that I stand up for what I believe in, no matter the cost. And it has cost us a lot different times. Um, sticking to what we believe and being able to say it out loud. Um, so I think that's something, and I try not to do it in a mean way, but um, in a way that explains why we feel the way we do about certain things and, and why it matters. Yeah, I think that's one thing. And I hope that through doing that, we are able to encourage that in others through the coterie to have those honest, open, direct discussions, which is something that I really value and others also. Yeah. And I think if I had to say the second thing, I'm really good at talking to my kids about you their are. issues and what they need and what they want and helping them. When you have a blended family, you can't always say exactly what you think because there are other parents involved and you have to be sensitive to them and to how your children feel about them, even if you don't agree. And so I think I've gotten very diplomatic at saying it, uh, the Socratic method works great with me. <laughs> in terms of asking them what is it they think and what is it they want and if they want this then what are the steps they're going to have to do to take that and helping them navigate through what they think and then being able to articulate it you know I always talk about voice so finding the voice that they need to use mm -hmm. to get what they want and then to put that in action so I think that's one of the things I'm better at almost better with them than I am with myself and you love that part of me a part of yourself yeah, I think I do because I think they respect it and I think it helps them learn to solve their own problems. Yeah, I've so. seen that part of you in action. Actually, I've seen both parts of that, <laughs> of you. The one that is very clear on your opinions um, and unafraid to speak mm -hmm. up. And then this uh, parenting style that you have where you're able to talk with your children even about very difficult topics and get them to think through things. I've seen both sides of you in that. So I, I, I love those parts about you too. Well, thank you. Now your turn since I was put on the spot. time now. Um, <laughs> no deflecting from you. I already tried it. Uh, oh my gosh. Um, I guess one of the things I love about myself is my crazy curiosity. Mm hmm I am endlessly curious about what makes people do what they do. I'm like, you are an analyzer. You do try to figure it out. I want to know how these two dots came together. I mean, mm -hmm. that just seems kind of interesting and fascinating. Not so much of what history they had that caused it, but their thought process and then if it's getting the results that they want, especially in business. So I'm endlessly curious about the person, uh, how they think, how they feel, uh, and ultimately how all of that comes together that's causing their actions and their behaviors and ultimately the results, good, bad, or indifferent that they're having. So it's just, um, so I like my curiosity. 
I, I, I like that too. It makes for fun conversation. <laughs> it does. What about this? And how about that? Have you thought about the other? Yeah. I mean, and why? Why are you doing that? And genuinely wanting to know, but not being critical. No. Right. No, just interested. Just really, really interested. So number two. Uh, um, mm, mm. so I don't have a second one. You have to. Okay. I have to, um, I was going to say, this is one thing I, you, you kind of hit on it just, just a minute ago is my ability to love unconditionally. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that doesn't mean I agree or approve or any of those things, but it's my capacity to love with reckless abandon, just to, to love unconditionally. Um, and, and it has no, you know, critique or judgment or whatever to it. Um, and I think it's something I've heard frequently where people say, I just feel totally accepted by you. I feel totally loved by you. Even if I have completely different agree, uh, beliefs from someone else, I want them to know from the bottom of my heart that they are loved, they are accepted exactly like they are. Um, and of course, I'm going to be curious how they became what they are. <laughs> You are. And I, I think that's true too. And here's, here's one of the ways I think you demonstrate that is when it actually both of those qualities kind of combined when someone is talking and they, they come upon something with, with a deeper meaning or something that needs to be discussed further. You don't let them gloss over it. We, I, you, I've done it when I, I was upset one day on a accountability call and you, you said, wait, we're going to stop and talk about that. But, I was no, going on. <laughs> with whatever it was I was saying. And you're like, no, we need to address that. And we need to figure out what's going on that's making you feel that way. And I think that that action in those moments, and I've seen you do it with other people too, makes people feel loved unconditionally and makes people feel important because you're not willing to gloss over the hard conversation. And I don't always want to have that that conversation you know in that moment sometimes when you're trying not to be upset and to stop and have someone say wait a second <laughs> and then you then you're sunk you can't be yeah. you know completely with it but it needs to be done and it's a it's a way of loving someone and letting them know that it's okay that they're that there's something broken right that second that we need to talk about and look at and analyze and how can we make it better I mean so that to me is the demonstration that action demonstrates those two qualities really, really well. Thank you for, for pointing that out. It's, it's interesting because that observer curious side of me also has me have really intense sensory acuity. I can tell when an emotion or a thought is coming up by simple little movements in their cheeks or in their eyes or the voice just changing just a little bit or the breathing changing a little bit. I know something is coming up and if it's a safe space, I will address it. If it's not safe, then I'm gonna step back and try to create safety. Mm -hmm. Uh, for them so they can bring it up because there's a reason that that thought or that emotion bubbles up and I've been gifted with someone feeling vulnerable enough to share it mm -hmm. it really is a gift it is and I think you and I have a similar quality in that people tell us things they might not tell other people and I think it's because of that lack of judgment and that willingness to accept whatever it is um and I think that's why the coterie is, is going so well. And we've had so many tears on happy hour of all things. Um, but they're good <laughs> well, and I think, I think they're the, last week, somebody was touched and that's why they had tears and it was a good sort of tears. So I think that building that kind of intimacy, you have to feel seen to build that. And I think that that's how I felt when you said that to me, you didn't let me go on and gloss over it. You feel so, seen, so you feel heard, and you feel like it matters. That you matter. Mm -hmm. You are significant. Yeah. You and what you're going through is important to me. Just like that girl you were talking about before, this first time there, and she burst out in tears. She goes, 
I, I, I feel embraced. I feel loved. I feel part of the community. I feel like I'm, I can be myself. And, and we don't oftentimes be get, uh, are offered that in other mm-hmm. scenarios. And I think you and I are both good at that. And it's obviously what we want to spread through the coterie uh, too, so others can feel completely loved. And uh, maybe we not, may not understand you, but we're gonna love you anyway. <laughs> exactly, and we're gonna ask you so that we're we can understand you better. <laughs> And then Elizabeth is going to have the tough conversations. With It'll be good cop, bad cop, right? There you go. <laughs> but all with love. Yeah, we're always loved, right? <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships are forged. This is Beck and Liz signing off and wishing you another purpose-filled and profitable week.